there's a reason people like in the West are starting to draw more and more towards um, you know Korean or, or Japanese filmmaking. Yeah, what is the most recent Japanese film or at least um, entertainment that you enjoyed so far? Uh, what am I thinking of? Um, see, a lot of them would be older ones, like Old Boy, for example. Um, I really enjoyed that one. I know it's not Japanese, but um, yeah, probably stuff like that. Um, you know, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, I really like that. And it's like Chinese, I think. Um, but yeah, like it's. Um, 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 uh, um, 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 Will Jordan, aka the Critical Drinker. If you have spent any time in the YouTube movie space, then you've undoubtedly been recommended one of his videos before. You've probably even watched one or two. He is a Scottish author known for his Ryan Drake book series. They appear to be a variant on Jack Ryan and Jason Bourne and numerous other examples in popular literature. And the overall success of these books is unclear. His fans talk about them a lot, but I myself have never seen one on a bookshelf. Now, all of this is rather incidental because his real success is as the critical drinker. His YouTube channel has over 1.85 million subscribers and his videos, which are typically released a couple of times a week, regularly get a million views and often gets much more. He also has additional channels where he'll do live streams and content fairly similar to content on his main channel, which is on an alternative channel for reasons that aren't really clear. However, his popularity is constantly growing. From script to video, it's likely his numbers will be even higher than reported here. And it wouldn't even be a hot take to call him the most popular media critic on the platform. What's up, internet? It's the Critical Drinker here. I'm just getting ready to fly home to Scotland, but no trip to America would be complete without a little... School shooting. In his videos, he plays a drunk man reviewing a movie trailer or just some random media news. And if you only watch a few of his videos, then you may not have a lot of thoughts about him. In fact, he has many videos that are simply movie reviews that, while not particularly deep, they do the job of expressing his ideas on the media. His movie reviews appear fairly standard in their ratio of good to bad praising media like Arcane, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, The Batman, and many, many more. However, there is usually an interesting statement by him that stands out in his positive reviews that seem a bit unnecessary and off. This movie would almost certainly have been some kind of coming-of-age story centered around Joy instead of Evelyn. Just another generic plot about a young woman's quest to find herself and realize her potential in a bland and uncaring world. And well, thank fuck the writers went a different route with this one. Evelyn is a fantastic character that's so much more layered and interesting than any bland, directionless Gen Z could ever hope to be. What? There seems to be a bit of a debate going on about whether or not this movie is woke. If I was a cynical man, I'd say it's kind of interesting that the rich, corrupt scumbags targeted by the Riddler all happen to be straight, white, middle-aged men, but hey, I guess that's just a total coincidence. These are weird comments since one of the main points of everything everywhere all at once was a mother learning to understand and accept her Gen C daughter. And statistically, in the United States, the vast majority of rich people are white men. It also seems like points that are irrelevant to the movie at large. But they are not irrelevant to the Critical Drinker's target audience. Do us a favor and hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more content like this. The irrelevant points become even more prominent when you look at his trailer reviews. Take his review of the Miss Marvel trailer. He uses this trailer to condemn the entire series. Miss Marvel trailer, how not to build a hero. How can he possibly know how they build Miss Marvel? By the title's own admission, this is a trailer review. A trailer is not the same as the finished product. Why condemn a whole series in a trailer review for an aspect that is impossible to know before you actually watch the series? It was similar to the She-Hulk trailer. 
His video, simply She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, LOL, no. I would actually argue that's not as bad of a title because if you watch a trailer and think that piece of media isn't for you, that is actually a fine takeaway. You do not have to watch every trailer and every piece of media. In fact, nobody does that. So to simply watch a trailer and say that doesn't look good is a 100% reasonable position. But this is where it gets even weirder, because a day before the series released, he did a video framed as a review. It was literally just him bashing the series for some promotional clips that had been released. If this trailer so disinterested you, why are you watching promotional clips and spending hours formulating a script and producing a video on said promotional clips? Then he does two videos on his main channel reviewing the show. If you thought the trailer looked bad, and thought the clips looked bad, why watch the show? There is literally so much media released in the world. Just watch something else and maybe find something you'll like. Add to it, he did seven videos on his second channel bashing the show. That's a grand total of ten videos done bashing a show after saying he's disinterested. Why would he do this to himself? Is he some sort of masochist? Well, the She-Hulk videos provide an interesting glimpse into the ideas he's presenting. Because many of his criticisms of that series boil down to it being a female power fantasy. Which is a weird thing to attack the show for, since a brief look at his channel shows that he loves the 80s films from actors like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone. Movies about big muscular men beating up numerous bad guys in a very cool, stylized way. Hell, most people dig those movies. Stallone during the 80s learned to be a pretty damn solid director. Meanwhile, Arnold worked with some of the best directors of the time, like James Cameron, Paul Verhoeven, John McTiernan, and Ivan Reitman. Those two actors have made a lot of good movies in their career with their muscular bodies and quippy one-liners. So why is a male power fantasy fine, but for some reason, a female power fantasy is an automatic bad thing? seems like nobody really cares about She-Hulk. But that's why The Critical Drinker is not only a bad critic, but a bad influence on culture in general. The more you watch, the more it becomes clear that he has an agenda. And that agenda has nothing to do with being a fair and honest media critic, but rather to push the idea that women in non-traditional roles are somehow a bad thing. The idea that somehow because straight white men are mildly less prominent in starring media roles nowadays, that this is automatically a bad thing, is a dumb idea. And while it is true that straight white men are less likely to be starring in a movie than they used to, this change is actually very slight. Spider-Man No Way Home, Avatar The Way of Water, the Super Mario Bros movie, and Top Gun Maverick are all massive movie successes since the COVID-19 pandemic and all of them star straight white men. Straight white men still have ample representation, but just every once in a while there will be a popular property that the idea that we can all be equal and share in the spotlight seems pretty good to me. Apparently it doesn't seem that way to Will Jordan. But attacking women for being in non-traditional roles isn't his only angle. And it was very helpful of him to make a video essay going over his other angle to bash media. Why Modern Movies Suck, They Hate Men, Part 1. In this video, he makes the claim that Hollywood is emasculating men. Some of his examples include Luke Skywalker from Last Jedi, James Bond from the Daniel Craig series, and Jaskier from The Witcher. His complaints are bizarre. What you can't do is lie about how the film constructs moments like these on a mechanical level. And that's what the drinker does here to cap off his video. If you're gonna pull something apart, at least break it down accurately. There's no need for this kind of nonsense. Especially when the critical drinker wants to come at things from a perceived high ground. Don't you see how this is just the inverse of what Anita Sarkeesian was doing a few years back? The Critical Drinker is a dishonest hack. This guy doesn't actually have any real opinions. He will change his opinions in a flash. He will cover up things he said in the past that make him look stupid. 
The truth is the drinker has created a boogeyman. The modern audience is a malleable, fluid catch-all that he can blame in any and all situations. But most importantly, it's a boogeyman that his audience loves to hate. The Death of the Stoic Man. Pick out any random selection of mainstream movies that are more than 10 or 15 years old and give them a watch. Now pay particular attention to the men in those movies. Watch how they act. Sorry, did he just fucking say the Stoic Man with an image of fucking Mel Gibson from Lethal Weapon on the screen at the same fucking time? <laughs> Oh, what do you want to hear, man? Do you want to hear that sometimes I think about eating a bullet? Trope number one, the death of the stoic man. Go ahead, pal. Be my guest. You shouldn't tempt me, man. Put it in your mouth. Pick out any random selection of mainstream movies that are more than 10 or 15 years old. Pay particular attention to the men in those movies. Watch how they act. Ow! Hey, you want to see crazy? I'll tell you. <laughs> The Critical Drinker is not only a bad critic, but a bad influence on culture in general. The more you watch, the more it becomes clear that he has an agenda. And that agenda has nothing to do with being a fair and honest media critic, but rather to push the idea that women in non-traditional roles are somehow a bad thing. The idea that somehow because straight white men are mildly less prominent in starring media roles nowadays, that this is automatically a bad thing, is a dumb idea. And while it is true that straight white men are less likely to be starring in a movie than they used to, this change is actually very slight. Straight white men still have ample representation, but just everyone once in a while there will be a popular property that the idea that we can all be equal and share in the spotlight seems pretty good to me. Apparently it doesn't seem that way to Will Jordan. But attacking women for being in non-traditional roles isn't his only angle. And it was very helpful of him to make a video essay going over his other angle to bash media. Why modern movies suck. They hate men. Part 1. In this video, he makes the claim that Hollywood is emasculating men. Some of his examples include Luke Skywalker from The Last Jedi, Rocky from Creed, James Bond from the Daniel Craig series, and Jaskier from The Witcher. Oh, and truly, what more quintessential example could I possibly give to start things off than Luke Skywalker, who went from one of the most iconic and beloved heroes in all of cinema to a sad, broken, miserable, and forlorn man. He talks about how Luke Skywalker goes from a badass Jedi in Return of the Jedi to a hermit in The Last Jedi, and ignores his entire character arc in that movie, which ends with him literally doing the most badass thing ever seen by any character in Star Wars ever. He faces down the entire First Order army, and to be even more badass than that, he's openly playing and mocking them. The entire army is literally no threat to Luke. How does that not play into a male power fantasy? Listen, you don't even need to agree with me that Luke was badass, because it's fine if people don't like how he was handled in that movie. However, the drinker completely misconstrues reality. He bashes how Luke is characterized in the beginning of the movie, but then doesn't even mention where Luke ends up, which whether you like it or not, is objectively not where he started off. Not only that, but if the drinker expected to see Luke win the day with violence, which is typically associated with the male action hero, he must have forgotten how Luke won the day in Return of the Jedi. Never. He won when he chose to not kill his father. He won when he threw his lightsaber down. That was the last time we saw Luke Skywalker, was him choosing nonviolence. So the next time we see Luke Skywalker, when he once again throws his lightsaber, he is simply maintaining his growth that we saw established in the original trilogy. He also wins using nonviolence in The Last Jedi. He projected his consciousness and his likeness, which went unnoticed by Kylo Ren, across the motherfucking galaxy, giving the Resistance a chance to escape, and in so doing, mocked Kylo Ren while inspiring the new rebellion. He did all that without betraying that character progression from the original trilogy. It's like poetry, it's sort of if they rhyme. Mm -hmm. Every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. 
Or how about Rocky Balboa, the ultimate underdog and symbol of scrappy, determined optimism? A man who fought his way to the top through sheer determination and willpower, taking down men bigger and stronger than himself through sheer ref- And showing no emotion. Yo, I did it! I did it! So now, Rocky was killed. famously a guy with zero emotion. I don't believe in myself no more, don't you understand? Ever. Mm -hmm. What are you putting me through, Adrian? Ever. Yeah. I'm afraid! Alright? Then you get to something like Creed, where he's portrayed as a sad, lonely old man who's given up on life. A man who isn't... Because his wife is dead, he's an old man, he's... Yeah. It's not and the also... same situation. <laughs> That's just where he starts. Does this guy not understand fucking character arcs or what? In Creed, Rocky is an old man who has lost everyone he ever cared about, and when he's diagnosed with cancer, which is what his wife died of, he decides he's fine letting the cancer run its course, and this being the end of the road. But again, this is the beginning of his character arc in this movie. But a large part of his character arc in this movie is that he now has a new family with Adonis Creed, and that he should keep fighting which is literally what happens in the movie. This movie isn't emasculating Rocky, it's giving him one last fight, a fight that he wins. And Rocky has never been about not falling down. Rocky loses many fights throughout the franchise, he hits rock bottom a lot, but he always pulls himself back out. That's literally who he is. Yes, he falls down in this movie and is about to give up, but in true Rocky fashion, he pulls himself out of the gutter and decides to keep going. If that isn't Rocky, then I don't know who is. He is proud, he has a big heart, he is prone to emotion, and without those who give him heart, he is nothing. When he gets the cancer diagnosis, he's finally done. Deflated. Mickey is gone, Adrian is gone, Polly is gone, Apollo is gone. Everyone he has ever loved or who has loved him is gone. And he just wants to lay down and go to be with them. And so this is where I fundamentally disagree with the drinker. Rocky is not retconned here. He is as true to his core as he has ever been. Rocky is a man who needs his friends and family to shore up the inner strength he already has. He needs them to patch up and weld together the broken bits of the man he is until he stands tall and shining in the sun. They hold him up. They give him something he needs to become greater than his parts. In short, it's like Rocky said. I don't know, without you being here, I probably, I wouldn't be here either, huh? As for Daniel Craig's James Bond, this argument is weird to say the least. He says Bond is emasculate because he pines for Vesper Lind. And while Bond is always portrayed as a womanizer, even Daniel Craig, the idea that he would get hung up on a woman isn't unheard of. In 1969's On Her Majesty's Secret Service, he meets Diana Riggs Tracy, an actress famous for her roles as Emma Peel in The Avengers and Olenia Tyrell in Game of Thrones. She is the Bond girl for that film. But what makes her different is that Bond marries her at the end of the movie. He decides he is done with the womanizing and will be happy with her for the rest of his life. That is, until Blofeld's men pop up and assassinate him. Literally, the next movie, Diamonds Are Forever, starts with Bond on a revenge mission to kill Blofeld. Tracy is brought up numerous times throughout the series, with the last mention of her being in Timothy Dalton's License to Kill in 1989. So somehow saying Craig's Bond is emasculated because he gets hung up on Vesper Lynn would mean that Bond has been emasculated since 1969. <laughs> the Critical Drinker is not only a bad critic, but a bad influence on culture in general. The more you watch, the more it becomes clear that he has an agenda. And that agenda has nothing to do with being a fair and honest media critic, but rather to push the idea that women in non-traditional roles are somehow a bad thing. And on the surface, Thor Ragnarok seemed like great fun, at least until you started to look a bit deeper and realized that he basically spends the whole movie playing second fiddle to strong female character and strong female antagonist. The idea that somehow because straight white men are mildly less prominent in starring media roles nowadays, that this is automatically a bad thing is a dumb idea. But attacking women for being in non-traditional roles isn't his only angle and it was very helpful of him to make a video essay going over his other angle to bash media.
In functional terms, what you see on screen these days aren't really men in the normal sense. As for Jaskier, he's a character on The Witcher. The Witcher is a series starring Henry Cavill as Geralt of Rivia, who is a brave, stoic monster hunter. I don't know if any character fits the definition of male power fantasy better than him. The Drinker of course knows this because he purposefully chose this scene for his editing. Or at least I hope he was paying attention while editing. But in this clip you see a shoulder in frame, and that shoulder is literally Geralt of fucking Rivia. The framing he does in this video is inherently dishonest. Which brings us to one of the most deceptive aspects of Critical Drinker's content. The many bizarre choices in his editing. Trope number two, the deconstructed hero. Remember all those awesome, heroic male characters that you liked when you were growing up? Well, forget about them because they were never actually heroes in the first place, and modern Hollywood is determined to prove it to you. For example, as he talks about the stoic, badass male heroes from a bygone era, we see Iron Man. This is bizarre for a couple of reasons. Yeah. Let this god damn it so fucking stupid. Yeah. He just showed Tony Stark, who is literally <laughs> like a modern action hero. Mm hmm. He is a modern, like, a, yeah. what the f? They're trying to destroy the heroes of our past, and I'm like, I really need some citation on that claim. What are you talking about? Iron Man, Tony Stark, is from the current era of film, despite his swan song in Avengers Endgame. Drinker even uses the phrase, all those awesome male heroes you liked when you were growing up, which is truly weird, as Drinker is around our age. We were adults when the first Iron Man film debuted, and this isn't the only video in which he gets very loose with the age range that he's speaking to. Seemingly casting the widest possible net to catch as much of the coveted male 18 to 49 demographic as he possibly can. You know, it's funny to me that Critical Drinker is somebody who advocates so strongly for stoicism when part of being stoic is being a straight talker. But if you look at what Critical Drinker does, he is really good at saying nothing. Of course, he rides the line of plausible deniability, just like all these other assholes. But there's two things that he does that are so blatantly dishonest that nobody should take them seriously if they're aware of this. First and foremost, as I'm sure the other guys have pointed out, it's very rare that the footage you see on screen has anything to do with what he's actually saying. And that's very intentional by having his videos just be a consistent stream of quick seven second long clips of various different parts of various different movies with various different themes and different plots and different characters and all that is that he is essentially creating visually suggestive language it's giving you an idea of something but not telling you specifically what it is and in doing so it's up to you to fill in the blanks as to exactly what those specifics are two the famous image of the message first of all when he shows it on screen he shows it very briefly it's impossible to take in the entirety of the image any one time he shows it on screen but if you go download the image and take a look at it what exactly is the message what is the unifying theme here there's a reason why he is not Spelling it out for you in the image. This is a Rorschach test. When he shows you this and says this is the, the message, you decide what that message is. If you actually take Critical Drinker seriously as a movie critic, all you're really saying is that you are exactly as easy to manipulate as he thinks you are. As awesome and badass as Iron Man is, and he is, stoic is not an accurate way to describe Tony Stark, of all people. Steve Rogers, sure. Captain America could be the picture in the dictionary next to Stoic, but not Stark, who wears his anxiety on his sleeve, quips incessantly, often as a way to distract from his obviously overwhelmed emotional state. Peace. I love peace. I'll be out of a job with peace. peace. Happy birthday. Thank you. I don't... Oh, that's my pee, if you know. Oh. Sorry. Well, don't I'll ever stand me. Over. As soon as possible. I don't like being handed That's things. That's because I love to. He doesn't like to be handed things. Yeah, I have a pee. Oh, I got it. Uh, I don't like people handing me things. One thing I've proven is that you can count on me to pleasure myself. You ever lose knowledge that you're my life? You 
compared to this issue with you. It's usually works. Well, performance issues, not uncommon. One out of five. I'm and you have to wear your hobby in the living room? Just breaking it in, you know, it's always a little pinchy in the gooey bag at first. So. <laughs> They're less likely to admit to personal weaknesses, insecurity, and emotional fragility. Iron Man 3 is literally about Tony having panic attacks and breaking down after the traumatic alien invasion of the Avengers film. How did you get out of the wormhole? Wait a minute. Sorry. Let's check out the suit. My diagnosis is that you've experienced a severe anxiety attack. Hey, I admit it. My fault. I'm a piping hot mess. Nothing's been the same since New York. You experience things, and then they're over, and you still can't explain them. Gods, aliens, other dimensions, I'm, I'm just a man in a can. They're less likely to admit to personal weaknesses, insecurity, and emotional fragility. I didn't even mention New York. Right, and then you just said it by name, while breathe. denying having said it. Breathe. Are they coming back? The aliens? Maybe. Can you stop? Remember what I told you that I have an anxiety issue? Does this subject make you? Make you edgy? Yeah, a little bit. Want me to stop? You want me to Remember stop? Remember when I said to stop doing that? I'm sort of, you're going to freak me out. Oh, man, you did it, didn't you? You happy now? They're less likely to admit to personal weaknesses, insecurity, and emotional fragility. What we needed was a suit of armor around the world. Remember that? Whether it impacted our precious freedoms or not. That's what I said we'd lose. You said, oh, we'll do that together, too. We lost. And you weren't there. But that's what we do, right? Our best work after the fact, we're the Avengers. We're the Avengers, not the pre-Avengers. Okay. We need Let's you, see. your new blood. A bunch of tired old mules. I got nothing for you, Cap. I got no coordinates, no clues, no strategies, no options, zero, zip, nada, no trust, fire. The fact that he's included in this part basically renders Drinker's entire criticism of men in modern film moot. Stark having panic attacks, being overly quippy, and wearing his feelings on his face didn't prevent Drinker from considering him a badass male hero. Because men can be both. Something prevents Drinker from seeing Tony Stark for what he is, a nuanced, multifaceted hero who can be overwhelmed and rambling out of panic, or stoic, determined, and extremely competent, depending on context, like the situation and what the character is going through at the time. You know, like actual human beings. Doth mother know you weareth her drapes? Let's face it, this is not the worst thing you've caught me doing. We're talking about like like the laziness and the editing. I've been like I know some of my videos. I've I've been lazy before in my editing, right? Like like a clip. It, sometimes I have like a compilation that I'm putting into a video, right? A, a clip will slip in. But the thing is, especially also if you've watched like the Pillar of Garbage video, like. He does edit, per like he purposefully he knows what mi he's doing, misconstrues yeah. mm -hmm. the things he's editing to to fit his point, to lie about it, you know? Like, it's it's not just lazy editing, it's like, it's lazy and purposeful editing. And then he says this. And this isn't even mentioning how Ryan blatantly rewrites previous events to show you what he wants you to see instead of what actually happens. The example Drinky gives for Ryan Johnson's blatant rewriting is the scene where Blanc and as we later see Helen spot Duke's voyeurism. Batista's watching his girlfriend supposedly having an affair with Miles only to be observed by Blanc. Now look at the later version of this exact same scene. Notice how Helen's been added in here when she totally should have been visible before. Except no, that isn't true. There's a reason the drinker plays these clips on mute. Let me put the sound back on for you. That was the first time we see this. There's a close shot of Duke, then we hear the twig snap, and then we pull back to a shot revealing Blanc. Here's the scene as we're shown it later on. We start with this slightly wider shot, revealing Blanc and Helen, then Helen leaves, causing that sound, and Duke turns round. This point is the moment we saw earlier on, and there's a very obvious, very obtrusive sound cue, the sole purpose of which is to communicate precisely this. 
Look, you can enjoy the way moments like this toy with the audience perspective, complementing the film's themes, these ideas of how we see and how we falsely composite and rationalize these perceptions away from the truth, away from what's really plainly shown to us, or you can dislike it. But what you can't do is lie about how the film constructs moments like these on a mechanical level. And that's what the drinker does here to cap off his video. The traditional heroic male lead that was pretty much the bedrock foundation of cinema for almost a hundred years is apparently no longer a viable commodity in entertainment today. They're too dated, too toxic, too dangerous to put into the limelight, and so they've been replaced with more acceptable alternatives. So much of this video is Will Jordan merely grasping at straws to make a specific and inaccurate, perhaps cynical and dishonest, point. A point that only serves to incite outrage in his audience for modern films. It would be nice to see a bit of balance and variety for a change, instead of Hollywood trying to push the unhealthy message that masculinity in all its forms is toxic, broken and needs to change, how about showing us a range of positive male characters? How about acknowledging that men actually have something to- <laughs> I, I love that. Like, like we don't get that. I mean, yeah, like I'm we don't get really that- really struggling right now. Showed. Fuck. He shows the same- <laughs> The Witcher one. A scene where there is two. Ah! He's, he's, yeah. making, he's making me lose my mind. He just debunked his whole video, right? So at the end, he goes, Oh, not every man needs to be the stoic man that I want them to be, right? As long as there's a little bit of, like, variation. That's exactly what movies are nowadays. If we go back to, like, the old days with, like, all these action heroes, there is less variation in men, you know? And that's the problem with The Critical Drinker. If he was just a bad movie reviewer, that would be one thing. But it seems clear, the further you dive in, his goal isn't to talk about the media. His goal is to use the media to push the idea that straight white men are being pushed down and devalued in society. His goal is to push a political agenda under the guise of media analysis. That's why he frequently streams with the likes of Nerd Erotic, Geeks and Gamers, Ryan Kennel, and so on. The noteworthy difference being, if you look at Drinker's videos in isolation, they appear far more neutral than anything on those other channels. Hell, you might even find a fair amount of videos that are largely, you know, decent reviews on his channels. And that's what makes him far more deceptive than many others. If someone watches just one or two of his videos, he might seem like a funny Scottish guy acting like a drunk goofball, and it can be easy to dismiss some of his bad points. That's what makes him a gateway to much worse channels. He presents himself as unserious and says ideas that plant seeds in people's minds. He has a legion of defenders who blindly follow his reviews, using the fact that he's a published writer to prove that his points are correct and that he understands narratives, no matter how insane or disconnected his point actually is. Peter Dinklage publicly criticized Snow White for reinforcing negative stereotypes of people who have dwarfism. And because of this, the drinker declares that Dinklage has no sense of humor. And now, because of Dinklage's comments, the seven dwarves have been altered to intelligent engineers instead of comedic relief. The dwarves that were used for comedy effect in the original have been reworked into highly efficient, intelligent, and disciplined underground engineers. Why? Because apparently we can't depict little people on screen in a way that could be even vaguely interpreted as negative. This is coming from the critical drinker, the same man who gets upset when straight white men are depicted as buffoons. We can't have men in sort of positions of power, we can't have uh, like traditional strong masculine men uh, in, in lead roles anymore, and if, if you ever get a character like that, they almost always become the butt of a joke. Isn't it funny how the only two male characters in this film are either portrayed as weak and pathetic or dumb and comical? Just something to think about. And of course, all the jokes are at the expense of the male characters. There's a white guy, is Fred, who's now the butt of every single joke. He's an idiot, uh, he can't do anything for himself, all that stuff, and it's like, it's like a parody. Here's a crazy idea, we're gonna make fun of all the male characters in our movie and just, uh, yeah, just make them into a bumbling moron. Um, cause, like, apparently, in the, the, the eyes of modern Hollywood, a, a straight white male is not allowed to be, like, just a hero. He's not allowed to be good at anything, and he's not allowed to just, uh, do something genuinely inspiring and heroic. It's interesting how he can understand the feeling of wanting positive representation when it comes to straight white men. But he can't afford that same sympathy to minority groups. 
I guess those minority groups should just accept that they are comedic relief and step aside and let the straight white men be the heroes. If this video does nothing else, it needs to make it clear that calling the critical drinker a media critic is only true at the surface level. What he actually is, is a political channel designed to make white men, typically young white men, feel victimized by the media simply by being more representative of the world we live in. That somehow more women or minorities in action roles means that white men are under attack in the world. This is nonsense that is straight from the right wing playbook that even plays into the racist white replacement theory. Critical Drinker doesn't say the worst rhetoric of the people who push these ideas. He leaves that to his friends, who he again frequently streams and makes videos with. Uh, Chrissy, have you ever heard of the comedian Basha K. Ali? No, that sounds like something you yell at before you blow up a plane. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, who many people will find through the Drinker's channels. Drinker plants ideas in people's minds that will push impressionable people towards an antisocial right-wing ideology, but does so in an easily accessible manner. The problem with the critical drinker isn't that he has some bad takes, which any critic will have. Hell, even Siskel and Ebert famously have some bad takes. No, the problem with the critical drinker is that the message he presents pushes people towards unhealthy relationships with media and in the direction of more extreme channels such as Geeks and Gamers, Nerd Roddick, and Eric July. He has a massive platform that he uses to push white men into the idea that they are being victimized, causing them to blame feminism and wokeness, an idea that has no basis in reality, and his focus on the message prevents his reviews from ever reaching their true potential. And all of this together is what makes the critical drinker the worst movie critic. We hope that even if you're a drinker fan, you'll consider some of these points the next time you watch his content. We're not jealous. We aren't trying to use his name to build our own channel any more than he's using Disney to build his. We're film fans, and we just hate to see people accept this guy at face value. Please be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and share this video with anybody you think might appreciate it. We're far from the only people who see these problems with the critical drinker. Men who kicked ass, triumphed against the odds, and saved the day. Man, I yeah, they don't make them like that anymore. When's the last time you guys saw a movie about a dude that triumphed over the odds and saved the day? To illustrate the point being made here, Top Gun Maverick, uh, yeah, hmm. That's about a, that's about a dude that uh, defies odds and saves the day, I think, actually. So that one's not a good example. But uh, Doctor Strange, oh, that's where a guy faces overwhelming odds and then saves the whole multiverse. So yeah, oops. Well, um, Avatar The Way of Water, oh, damn. Mm, Jurassic World Dominion, Oops. Uh, the Batman. Ooh, f Thor: Love and Thunder. Ah, ooh, e. Spider Man. No Way Home. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Black Adam. I mean, come on. That's still like most movies are still about that. You fucking lot like how f god damn it dude I critical drinker tell me when you make content that you know is stupid and you know that you're just making it to appease idiots how do you silence that little voice in the back of your head that says like you're a piece of shit why are you doing this Bobby why are you such a piece of shit Bobby I'm assuming your name is Bobby. Uh, I've just I've decided that. Uh, how do you suppress that little voice? Because man, 
you are cleaning up with this griff, bro. I don't know. Thank you guys so much for watching this behemoth of a video. And thank you again to Actual Fandom and Organized Chaos for working on this video with me. And of course, a special appreciation to Actual Fandom who edited this whole thing. A lot of effort has gone into this video, so please go show these channels some support if you haven't already. And also go take a look at all the other channels that appeared in this video and show them some love, whether it's Eric Debunks or Pop Counter Culture or Pillar of Garbage or any of the other initiatives members or adjacent channels or the other awesome channels like Xander Hall and Empty Mitch. As always, if you disagree with anything that was said or shown, let me know down below. But other than that, I hope you all have a pleasant day. Stay safe and peace out, suckers.